You talked about before how you had a baby outside of your marriage. Sure. And the boyfriend of the mother ended up killing the child? Sure. Shook it or... How, how old was this child? Nine months. Nine months old. Yeah. Wow. So were you, were you, had a relationship with the child and you were... I was a scared kid. I was trying to keep it under wraps. I was hustling to pay. Oh, so this uh, was early on. Yeah, it was very, yeah, early Okay. On. And I was hustling to pay child support. And uh, I remember she had come to me and said, if you don't uh, put me on your life insurance, I'm going to tell your, your wife what happened. Okay. And... Um, I decided that I would have one great weekend with my family, and then that, that Sunday I would tell them what happened um, because I wasn't going to um, make that leap and put them on my life support, uh, my, my, li my life insurance, and mm -hmm. until I got um, confirmation, until I'd gone to, you know, take the DNA test and all yeah. that. Yeah. And, and so it had, that was like a Thursday. And then... Um, so and it was an Easter, which would have been that Sunday. So I decided I would, I would go to church with my family, and I would tell them after church, and get ready to spend my last weekend with my family. And um, oh, you I, figured your wife was gonna leave you after that? Oh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay. So I, uh, that was a dumb plan in retrospect. But so Saturday night I'm performing um, um, at Maverick Flats in Los Angeles. My friend calls me and says the baby's in the hospital. He's not gonna make it. And I remember praying that God would take this off me all that time. I was like, and instantly I thought two things. My prayer was answered, and it was the worst thing that In I ever the worst possible way it was answered, yeah. So I go to the hospital, and I walk past the family, and, and he is laying there in the bed. And I see him, and I see her and her boyfriend and her family. And they're all staring daggers at me. And I went to him, and I tell him I'm sorry. Because I know I would have... Or I like to believe that I would have been a father. I was scared. That's no excuse, and I'm not making one. And, and I don't want anybody to think I am making an excuse. I'm giving. It's just from a clinical perspective. This is what happened. So, so I go home, and I'm, 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 it was the most the quintessential bittersweet moment. So I. I go to church with my family. I pull over to a phone booth. I call the hospital. And they ask me who I was, and I tell them that I was his father. And they say he just passed. And it was the same moment I, that I had planned in my head to tell my wife that I hadn't, um, that what had happened. Was the was the boyfriend charged? Yeah, he went to jail. Yeah, he was A long time? Not long enough. Not long enough. He's out, so... He killed a kid. He's here. Killed your kid? Yeah, he did. Did you feel a sense of revenge that you needed to have? Or? I feel a lot of things. I feel a lot of things. Yeah. Very sad, man. What was this? And you already had kids at, the, at this I point. I did. I did. But it wasn't... Uh, listen, I felt uh, that I didn't have the right to feel revenge because he wasn't... I wasn't in his life. And I felt that somebody robbed me of something. And I feel right now that I, it's, it's something I think about. Every time something good happens to me, I think about that. Think about that. Sure. How did your wife take that whole thing? Well, my wife didn't know about that till uh, years later where. Oh, okay. You kept it quiet. Yeah. Because, again, I was a coward. I'm not disputing that. So years later, the girl I had the baby with, uh, um, I just couldn't take it. So. A couple years later, I just told told my wife. And um, back then, you could go to the gate without buying a ticket. It was before 9-11. So you could just meet people at the gate. Remember that? So I, my family would always meet me at the gate. So I had told my wife months earlier, I get off the plane, my wife is there. The girl I had the baby by is at the airport. Hmm. And she sees me, and I see her, and she sees my wife. And... I, you, I don't know what was on her mind, but I got the sense she was like, "Oh, I got you now." So when she came, when we walked off, I walked up to her, my wife. I said, "This is the girl I had the baby by," and my wife said, "I'm sorry for your loss." That was that. 
it wasn't well then months <laughs> years later it's, it's, it's a long story because it never yeah. so then years later the girl you know it it jammed her up too like it did me and 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 but i wasn't the mother and i wasn't with her every day with him every day and she started uh asking for money she needed some money and i told her my wife would have to take care of it because i couldn't so her and my wife talk and my wife started giving her money now Here's the horrible thing about that. So your your wife was giving her money years later mm-hmm. after the fact. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so she, the condition was that she could never ask me. My wife would take care of it. So my wife took it from my from my allowance <laughs> that I never gotten back. So I don't know if she's still giving it to her or not. Okay. But I know. But I don't get that money. In. She, she took a chunk out of the. Uh, she took a yeah, chunk my, out of the pot. And I can't go. Hey, are you still? I can't. You can't so do I, that. So. Well, well, you said when you were thirteen, you were dating a twenty-three-year-old. I, I don't know if I dating her. I knocked her. Off. <laughs> Is that when you lost your virginity? No, I lost. I, first off, to lose your virginity means that you were you wanted it. <laughs> now I lost my virginity at eleven. But I thought, I thought, I thought, and there was this girl who lived down the street to me, and and I thought that. You know, I just you know, I grew up in the neighborhood. Nobody talked about your parents didn't talk about anything. Everything you learn, you learn from cats in the streets. Mm-hmm. So this young girl, she's come around. She used to drive a car, and I was thirteen years old. I had gotten some, so I used to talk stuff to her. Oh girl, I tear it up and all that kind of stuff. So one day, she <laughs> she took me home and gave me some. I was like, oh wow, this is not. I don't. I and 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 sexually, it was just like weird because she would do stuff i would like I, i'm 13 i don't know what that is and uh so it was uh it was my first experience with somebody who could drive and had a driver's license but i never thought like i was like abused i, I thought because what i mean when she would come to pick me up all the dudes would be like you getting that i'd be like yeah and then i get in the car i don't want i don't want to i want to go well i i'd interviewed uh d ray davis mm-hmm. and uh he said he lost his virginity at 11 to two ugly, horrible 13-year-old women. Yeah. It was, I guess, friends of his mother. And, 13-year-old women? Uh, 30-year-old women. Oh, 30-year-old yeah, okay. He was 11. Yeah. My mother's friends, who were, my mother was involved in a lot of stuff, but I've had older women who thought I wasn't being parented correctly slightly try to take advantage of me, and not slightly, have taken advantage right, of me. But you lost your virginity to two 30-year-olds? Yeah. The same time? Yeah, two ugly, <laughs> horrible looking women. And you were? Uh, uh, what was I? You were how old? 11. And I remember when he was describing it, I kind of laughed because he was doing it in a comedic type of way and people just crucified me for laughing. Yeah, I didn't, <laughs> I don't have that thing where I go, I don't, I never felt like, and don't now to this day, have the same assessment of people, but they're allowed to, to to kind of feel what they do about it. But I, I was a cat talking shit. She took me up on the offer. <laughs> there you go. And I wanted to get out of it. <laughs>